One of the great responsibilities of an artist is to help us see clearly, whether it's seeing ourselves, our loved ones, or the society we live in. In the studio today is one such artist, Natasha Ria El Scari. That's a name you'll want to know if you don't know it already. She is mother, writer, project director of Upward Bound at UMKC's campus, and Kaveh Kanem Fellow. But what makes Natasha so hot is that she reveals the human condition with no pretense. Sure, there's metaphor, color, fanciful turns of phrase, but she shoots straight from the hip. And when I think of Natasha, I think of words like fierce, fly, indelible, badass, but in the same breath, sophisticated, tender, and sincere. This is first part of a two-part interview my name is Lonita Cook, and this is The Artist Tree. Thank you for joining us at The Artist Tree. We are here with Natasha, and we are going to have a good time. We're talking about everything from poetry to pimps posing as lovers. Later in the show, we are going to discuss documentary project, and we will have Harold Smith, filmmaker, join us. Thank you so much, Natasha, for coming to the show today. Thank you for having me. Yay. <laughs> okay, so let's just start out. I'd like to know a day in the life of Natasha Ria Elskari. A day in the life of Natasha Ria Elskari should start with a cup of coffee. <laughs> right. Prayer. <laughs> <laughs> and a jolt of energy. Um, it usually, Monday through Friday, will start with my children reminding me of what time it is so that mm -hmm. I can get going. Oh, so uh, they get up before you do? Yes. Yes. Um, in theory, I'm up before they are, mm -hmm. and I will be up, but then I'll lay back down mm -hmm. sometimes. So if I am up and going directly to the gym, then I'll be up at 5. Oh, so you, you but a part of I, your morning routine is a workout? Be. Yes. Nice. Or late at night. So mm -hmm. it just kind of depends on the day. Um, then it's off to drop them off to school, off to um, work at UMKC, mm -hmm. and then um, to pick them up, and then starts the evening activities. They're very active mm -hmm. as well. Um, my son is in sports year-round, mm -hmm. plus you know, does well in school and has his own artistic interests mm -hmm. that are starting to grow and my daughter is a dancer and oh, a nice. cheerleader and and so she's um and so they are like taking lessons they are yes. going to prep and yes. competing yes wow so so that's a full schedule on an average day we just have those things but they have practice they have classes um and then i always try to squeeze in of course you know i have to make dinner um homework and you're connection. doing all this do you have spare time at all? There is no such thing. No such thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I shouldn't even ask how you spend your spare time. Yeah, I don't think there really is any. Mm -hmm. I think I just incorporate, um, I've been trying to simplify my life, but what I realize is that the richness of my life is because I multitask, that mm -hmm. as I look to kind of delete things, it's always kind of heartbreaking. Right. So I don't do a lot of unnecessary stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, I just have to multitask. Mm -hmm. I, so when you say multitask, you have to double dip. One thing has to... Simultaneously cooking, reading, helping with homework, right. doing laundry, mm. practicing, voice recording poems, so writing poems. So when do you get time to write? When do you get time to see films? When do you get time to work on your artistic endeavors? Well, you know, surprisingly enough, we are not a TV family. Mm -hmm. So uh, Monday through Thursday, there is no television mm -hmm. um, at all because that we do music and we talk right. um, and activities. So, so how do you get your information? Is it internet? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. that might be a part of my morning ritual when I go to work and, um, you know, just clicking on the sites 
to see what's going on. But my mother <laughs> is actually the person that keeps me connected and other friends who know that I'm really busy. So they will send me links of important stories right. or stuff. And it's usually also around the work that I do. Sure. If there's a, some new report that's come out. Um, Harold is really great about informing me about things that are going on. Excellent. Which I know seems like a way to be very disconnected because in my art I try to be very connected. Sure. But I'm but not obsessed with the news. Um, I'm not obsessed with how news is reported in this country. Mm. And so um, I'm very sensitive to those things. So I just. I agree with you. I there. take it in doses. Uh, you know, I have friends who say, hey, it's supposed to snow tomorrow. Like, <laughs> you know, like, we're looking out. You know, that kind of stuff. I don't, I just, I have no interest in television right. uh, in that capacity. So. Well, I do know that you recently saw Red Tails. I did. Did you love it? It's very rare for me to go to the movies mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. I First of all, I sat in the theater. My nephew, um, who is almost 20, and then my son, who will be 13, and his best friend, uh, we went with my mom. And my mom and I sat in the theater like this. Oh. Kind of, I'm not a war person. I right. don't know what I was thinking, like why, right. why I even went to this movie, but. So why did you go to the movie? I went to the movie because of my interest in African American history, also wanting the boys to see that experience mm -hmm. um, on screen as well. And it just had a list of some of my favorite actors, people whose careers I'm kind of interested in, what they right. do well, and. If the artist's work should be impacted should should the consumer care about the artist's indiscretions and as an artist how do you feel about because thinking about red tails i really want to support this film mm -hmm. i know that there was some trouble getting it made but then one of the actors is having some personal issues right and so should we support or should we not because you're talking about terrence howard with his domestic violence mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. his violence against women well I see it in a couple of different ways. Um, one, I think that people should be held accountable for their actions within the society mm -hmm. um, as we would do any citizen. Right. So no one should be outside of the law that is designed to protect people, all those things. I am pretty sure that there are questionable engineers, questionable doctors, right. questionable lawyers <laughs> mm -hmm. that the the artist profession is not, um, it does not remove you from having a human experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, but they are people, but when it becomes, like you said, issues of violence against women, when it's these, you know, because everybody's going to make mistakes, everybody, yeah. but when it becomes these huge things, like with Michael Jackson, the allegations of child molestation and that, those sorts of things, should we as a consumer public say, you know what, I cannot support that lifestyle. Right. I, cannot. I think it's very individual mm -hmm. um, because you have people, some people who are hardcore artists, lovers of artists work. And so they just go with the love of the work. Mm -hmm. They're not involved in the personal life or, right. you know, we have so much access to people's lives um, that, you know, it could be somebody that we really admire. Um, I mean, I agree with you because I couldn't have survived without Michael Jackson's music growing up, right. you know? And you probably still can't. Right. Uh, do you think of those things when you listen to them? Are you haunted by that? You might. That might be mm. a part of your experience. But when people feel very strongly about art mm -hmm. or about an artist or their music, for some people it doesn't matter, but for some people it's a, that's everything about it. So you have people who will not shop at Walmart. They'll pay three times the amount at a local place because they want to support. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very individual thing. If you're asking about for me personally, it's a real case by case basis. It never, but it never excuses the behavior. Right. And for me, that never occurs. Right. So. Sounds good. Well, we are gonna go ahead and take a break. We are going to continue the discussion when we get back, okay? We're gonna take a break. We will be joined by Harold Smith and we will continue our discussion. This is The Artist Tree. thousands of people are diagnosed with macular degeneration, a disabling eye disease that leads to severe vision loss. As a scientist conducting research for the American Health Assistance Foundation, I want you to know that there is hope that a cure and new treatments for macular degeneration will soon be found, but only if we can continue our groundbreaking research. 
Learn about my research. Call 1-800-437-2423 or visit ahaf.org for free publications on eye disease. Welcome back. We are talking with Natasha Ria Elskari, poet and a plethora of other wonderful things. We are gonna get into art activism. A part of what we do on the show, um, supporting people who are art active and who have a positive impact on the community. Uh, and you definitely incorporate that philosophy into your work. Uh, I wanna to talk to you about um, getting started okay. as an artist. How do budding artists begin? Um, I think for me, the the start of it is the creation. Mm -hmm. um, I think once you discover that you like to create in whatever the medium is, that you start there. Mm -hmm. You start with, the, with that very free moment, that point of inspiration for the writer when that finger touches the keyboard or when that pen or you know, pencil hits that paper. Um, and you start from there, because I think that if you don't have a genuine love and spark for your art, mm -hmm. that it will not be life-sustaining. So do you mean that instead of chasing the art, you should let it come to you? Is that what you mean by it being genuine? How do you know it's genuine? However it's birthed, you know, mm -hmm. however, if whether it's someone exposing you to it and you never thought that you had it, or whether it's someone, um, whether you discover it, but where you're actually doing the creation of it. And, and let me make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that an artist begins when they start creating. You can say, oh, I'm a poet, but if you never put that pen That's right. to paper. Absolutely. Nice. You have to be engaged in the art, the good, the bad, and ugly of it, mm -hmm. but in the creation of it itself. Um, because that is really, for me, you know, my opinion is that we're, that's where the inspiration occurs, that's where the love occurs, and that is where it becomes life-sustaining or a lifelong pursuit. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, so many poets will tell you that they were writing poems and they flunked English because they were writing poems in English class. Right. You know, they'll, it, you hear all these types of stories. And so it's, it's that type of thing where, uh, speaking from as a writer, mm -hmm. it's, it's where you do it and you're not solicited to do it. Right. You're doing it because you want to create mm -hmm. whatever that creation is. Because it's in you and it, because it's it must in you come out. And it must come out. Mm -hmm. I think that's where you have to start, um, you know. Excellent. And then I also wanted to um, ask you, just a quick piece of advice. How would a young artist know if they're investing in a career versus a hobby? Um, well, I think that the way that things are changing, it can intersect. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make a career out of your hobby. Mm -hmm. If you are brave, ambitious, and able to have a business mind, mm -hmm. um, I'm not very interested in going to full-time writing because I actually enjoy working a full-time job and receiving direct benefits and knowing that I'm going to make right. the same amount every month. Right. But I'm also, my lifestyle is around that. I also am a divorced mother with two children. So mm. the idea of saying, oh, well, you know, whatever to health and <laughs> dental benefits is not really an option for me. Right. Um, I wouldn't even be able to create Can't in that. do the starving artist scene. No, right. and I don't think you have to. Like, um, I think that it just depends on your lifestyle. If anyone was interested in art, I would say become a minimalist. Well, then how do you balance both? Because that seems, I mean, because I think the glorified version of being an artist is the, yeah, the bohemian, right. the starving artist, you know. <laughs> But how do you stay professional? You have a job, you care for your home, your children. Right. How do you do that and be a working professional artist? By the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I make a choice that all of those things are important to me and I try to invest in those things. So that really is what it's like and I try to use my time to the fullest, mm -hmm. uh, try to make the best of my time. When it's time for me to create, I try to really sit down and be concentrated in my creation. Mm -hmm. Part of my creation is also thought. So thoughts come into our mind whether we want them to or not. I just pay attention to my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then that is kind of where the creation may occur. And I steal moments. You know, I can, in the middle of a day, speak a stanza into a voice recorder. That's going to take 40 seconds right. out of my day. So That's, when that idea sparks, you are the artist that makes sure you have your paper yes. pad available or your recorder. Yes. Get it down and then when it's time to sit and yes. be in that sweet spot. <laughs> yes. And sometimes I have to pause for that sweet stop. I have to pull over, 
Mm-hmm. And write a poem. Right. I'm driving. I need to stop. This is here. Wow. You know, and I do that. I allow that, and I still do that. And I will say, hold on, or stir the macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get this down. I'm absolutely that way. Right. I will pause for the creation because it comes to me. My creation comes very like a channel, mm-hmm. like a pouring. Mm-hmm. So for everybody, the process is different. If I'm commissioned to write a poem, it may look a little different. I will set aside time to do the research. But on my day-to-day expression, you know, it, it's going to just pour. So it's about bravery and prioritizing and making sure you give yourself those moments. Before we go to our break, I do want to ask you one more question. Um, I listened to a previous interview of yours, and a, a caller asked uh, some advice on what he can do to be a writer. And you told him, be religious about your writing, read other writers, those considered canons in the craft, and know the history of the genre and learn how to edit your work. Talk to me about the importance of knowing the craft and the history of the genre, I mean. Right, well I think what happens with a lot of young writers that I see that they think they're doing something new, Mm -hmm. (laughs) especially on the spoken word scene, they're like, this has never been done before. And I'm like, this has so been done before. (laughs) And I think it's a very arrogant place Mm -hmm. to not reach back to know where you're going. And when we reach back, we realize that people have been creating in the same art form, it may have looked differently for that time, but that we're a part of a rich legacy. Mm -hmm. Either a legacy denied, so for me, African American writers is the canon that I refer to. I just enjoy African American writers, I enjoy African American feminist writers. So if I think that in 2012, I'm the only woman who has had to work 50 Mm -hmm. jobs and write, I am in a very arrogant place, but when I realized that we had all of these other writers Mm -hmm. that were doing this in the 1940s, in before the 40s, creating and having families, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, early on, as early as Phyllis Wheatley, if you don't know that, you're thinking that you're just, I'm I'm the hot stuff. No, you're not. No, you're not. All right, sweetie. Yeah. You get me fired up. (laughs) This is good stuff, but we are going to go ahead and take that break, but we'll get right back into it when we come back, okay? All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is not a race. On the road to financial independence, the winners are the ones who stay the course. Learn more about securing your financial future and choose to save. It will pay off in the long run. I'm glad you decided to stay with us at The Artist Tree. We are joined by Harold Smith. He is a filmmaker, educator, painter, and the director of the documentary Natasha a portrait, no, portrait of an urban poet. Did I get that right? Yes, you okay. did. <laughs> okay, and so we're gonna go ahead and continue our conversation and Harold, please feel free to chime in. Okay. Right. okay, so we were talking about editing work and why is that process important? Um, I think particularly for the film, mm-hmm. um, I learned a lot about editing, just deciding on what aesthetic you want to put forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And there were times that Harold and I really agreed on things Mm -hmm. and other times that we really didn't. Mm -hmm. And I think for the film particularly, you really get to see what a person's artistic um, bent is. Mm -hmm. Uh, In my writing, I would say that I have created a document where I put lines that have been thrown away. So I never feel like I've totally abandoned it. That so way. you don't throw away your work, you right. just remove it. Because I'm the so finish. personally tied to my <laughs> work. And so in order to just move on in a poem or take something out of it, mm-hmm. I have a document where I stick those lines that didn't make it. That way I know I can always go back to them if I should ever need them. And cuddle with them and a little bit. And cuddle with them right. as needed. So, <laughs> right. um, but just knowing how to, how to uh, being able to look at your work objectively, mm-hmm. and I think that was where um, what I really enjoyed about working with Harold is that we were able to look. look well, at what it that does way. editing do for the work? I mean, is it just an is it simply an issue of polishing the work, uh, whittling it down to a finished product? I mean, what does knowing how to edit how does that uh, benefit? I why why can't I just create something and like put it out there? You can. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can. I think you can create that way. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think that I like what Erica Badu said about, you know, she said creation is the live performance, but Mm -hmm. the studio, the editing is the perfection of it. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know what you think, Carol. 
Yeah, I think editing is like um, the shaping of the clay. You give it the form, the way the way you want it to say what it says. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like apple pie. It can taste 50 different ways right. depending on how you season it. Mm -hmm. So I think the editing is kind of... the editing process is the seasoning. Yeah, the how you season it so it tastes a certain way. Okay. Mm, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Thank I'm going to write that down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Harold, why was yes. Natasha the right um, model, the right mm -hmm. <laughs> for right. your film? Um, well, or it's the film you guys did together, but why mm -hmm. was the subject. it right? uh, Well, first of all, I thought her, her work is uh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. I think it's critical. Um, I see, honestly, I see very few um, documentaries or anything talking about black feminist poets. Mm -hmm. I felt it was something that needed needed to be archived, mm -hmm. something that needed to be recorded, explored, and put down. And why was the documentary right in your careers at this time? Why was this the right time to do it? No, I don't know. No, <laughs> I will say because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. I will, say, it's there. I will yeah. say because Harold seizes opportunities. That is what I love mm -hmm. about him as an artist. And when he gets that point of inspiration, he goes in so hard on it. Mm -hmm. And so that is what I think. And he, he didn't really give me a choice. He's like, no, look, we need to do this. And this I was like, time. oh, I'm busy. I got this, this, and this. He was like, no, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it was really his brainchild. It would not have taken place without his mm -hmm. dedication to it sure. and without his pushing me out of my life to say, you need to still pause and take account of this aspect of your life. Well, and you agree with that? You kind of come to this crossroads and it's time to make a choice and you go for it? Is that what? Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. If it's yeah. there, I think if, if the opportunity is there, it's there for a reason. And so what has come of the project? Because When, when did you guys complete the project? Uh, November? November? In October. October? So screened in October mm -hmm. in Westport Coffee House, then in November in New York City, mm -hmm. and now it's going to be airing on Snag Films coming oh. up soon. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. That's, that's, that's major stuff. Yeah, it's big time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we, we just have a little bit more time, and there's so much stuff that I want to get into mm. with you guys. But I want to talk about dating, because mm. Valentine's Day is coming up. Boom. And I, <laughs> and I know you guys are going to give me the straight truth, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Skewed, but still I, I, I actually had a conversation with a girlfriend of mine recently who's just, you know, how we complain, especially around this time when we're single. And um, we're, we're having these issues of dating these guys who seem to be pimps mm -hmm. posing as lovers. And what I mean by that is we have the guy who kind of the same philosophy as a pimp. You get her mind. You know, and you can manipulate her and have her do what you want. And I, you know, how do you avoid that? And I didn't have much advice for her. It's like, you gotta give it time, that kind of thing. What would you say to somebody like that? I would say that you can't be pimped if you're not a hoe. Mm. Mm. All right now. And whatever that looks like, mm -hmm. however you classify pimp, and however you classify hoe, mm. you, you have to have two players in that mm -hmm. in order for one to feed the other. Well, I mean, if you if a guy is, you know, he operates that way, yeah, and he puts you on a corner, you know where you stand, mm -hmm. right? But the manipulation, women want to be loved so much, and yeah. and they open themselves up so easily. I, I, I well, love is about vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is a part of of love. You run that risk, even if someone has good intentions. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't want to give so much power to that. Right. I think that women need to be clear in vocalizing exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes women are not clear. They'll play along with where a guy is hoping that that will make him comfortable and to stay. Instead of voicing, right. I am looking for this. What are you looking for? Right. You can answer that in the first date. Mm. That's a cup of coffee. Right. What are your intentions? Are you dating? Are you married? <laughs> you know, asking those questions that keep you and then using discernment, always having discernment. And and how about you, Harold? I mean, if if a if a guy, um, you know, he pretends to be your companion. I mean, what 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 would you say to women? Well, I, I think personally that a no good man can be recognized a mile away. Mm -hmm. I think that the problem is that uh, a lot of women just don't uh, look at character. Uh, you know, just because it's uh, hot doesn't mean it's nutritious. <laughs> and I think that um, 
that's what happens. I think that the regular guy, nice guy, unfortunately, the media, the entertainment media has done a number on the decent man and made him look like a square, mm. a nerd. And so uh, a lot of people just don't want that. Wow. But of course, you know, you reap what you sow. So if you're choosing these guys that bring in all the flash and pizzazz, you know, be, be ready for the end of the roller coaster ride. Mm. So it's about knowing who you are, knowing what you want, and articulating that without fear, right? Yeah, and looking at the right things. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah, and, and also um, asking to yourself to be, make sure you're in an authentic place. Yeah. Because you will attract people that are authentic, right. even if it's not the very first time, mm -hmm. just keep trying, keep your heart open, and, and you know, keep, avoid being bitter. That right. is really, mm -hmm. no one likes a bitter person. I agree mm -hmm. with you on that. Well, we have come to the end of our show. It has been my pleasure mm -hmm. to have Mine you here, too. definitely, and I have to have you guys come back if, you know, if we could make that work, we will make it work because okay. you, you're wonderful. Um, You'll go ahead and perform a piece for us? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us, and Natasha's going to take us out. What supremacy looks like on a Monday. They, 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 they want our men, they want our lips, they want our skin, they want our hips, they want our labor, they want our birth, they want to steal our worth. They want to sell it above market price to the highest bidder. They want to act like what they think is black. They want to say, what's up, my... They want to say when they see it in literature. They want to say it means nothing. Even when we say it means something, they want to sing our songs. They want to learn our runs. Don't they want to know where those runs come from? They want to lick our beauty only when they are drunk. They want to touch our skin. They want to our kin, but they don't want to touch us. They don't want to treat us. They want to inhale us, but they don't want to bury us next to Thomas Jefferson. They want to be brown like us, but don't want to mess with our hair. They want to devour us. They want to pluck our rhythms and barbecue them on an open spit and say, but the blues are universal. Universal, dude. They want to take our umbilicals and strangle us with it. They want our men, they want our reggae, they want our hip hop to stop teaching. They are lips, they are hips, they are kiss. Even when we hate all of who we are, they take our blood and make pot liquor. They want to go green on our backs. They want to arm our children for their attacks. They want to marry our breasts. They want to implant their lips. They want to implant their butts, pump the cancer of oppression, fat from our wounds, and hila it to outer space to look like the girls they claim are grotesque. Mad cause sit -a happy, they wanna steal our drama and hoe us on screen. They wanna be us, they wanna be us, they wanna be us. Then they say, like, why are you so mean? I don't see race. I see spiritual beings. They want us to clean up their filth, land, landfill their mess in our backyards, then tell us we are garbage and responsible for the earth's distress because we don't recycle the boxes that house our expired food. They say lies like post-race and Obama won, so get the fuck over it. Yet they want to be, they want to be, they want to be just like me, just like we. And sometimes we don't love we. We ashamed of our chicken wings. We ashamed of the cellulite that holds up booty. We ashamed of BB shots. We straighten our volume while they're trying to be curly, hot dog themselves to a native red. And we, we as confused as a preacher's gay son after the first holy kiss. We confuse like we're looking at the proclamation, trying to find the word free still shackled. We confuse like people who always have to double speak. We confuse like, we don't mind if they say if they cool. But they want us. They out for our blood. They out for our men. They out for our lips. They out for our thighs. They out for our hips. And so ambitious. They get us almost each time because they've been practicing this a while. And what they don't steal, we give them anything of value. We are quick to throw out anything in exchange for they nothing. We bath water and black baby to drown in it. Drown out our voices, drown out our history, drown out our soul, drown out our rebellion, drown out our myopha, drown out our collectivity. What's left, they take off the top, call it cream, and make it they own. <laughs>